The USDA has approved cell-cultivated meat to be sold to the public for the first time. They call it lab-grown, they'll call it cultivated, they'll call it cell-based, they'll call it slaughter-free. They'll call it anything but fake. Guinea pigs, 70 million a year are eaten? Right, I thought they are just pets. Who's eating it? I know it ain't us Americans. If this stuff is progressing more, they will outlaw regular meat. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Amen. Did I quote that? all the time would you eat the fake chicken or will you just stick with good old-fashioned god made blood guts chicken heads death that's what my dreams were last night and if anybody wants to know why it's because david is a mass murderer of chickens yeah well we've talked about it before uh, my wife and i live on a homestead um and we spent the day yesterday uh, thanks to Jacob, who watched our our daughter along with his kids, came over. Um, but we spent the day yesterday um, slaughtering our chickens, or a good portion of our of our um, our chickens, our meat birds that we bought as chicks and raised from chicks for this purpose. Um, why do that? Why not buy straight from the store? Um, Devil's advocate. Why are you doing it? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a, an argument to be had about that. Um, one of the things that my wife is going to put out a video on YouTube on her channel about this, but like. Uh, about the the things they don't tell you about raising meat birds uh, mm -hmm. and about harvesting meat birds. Um, but at its core, why? Because don't do it to save money is, right. is what I'm saying. Because if you want free range, organic chickens, like, um, you know, like, like we've ended up with, um, you get there, but it's not like it, it's not like it comes free. Like you got to pay for organic feed. You got to have the space for them. You got to be able to house them. But um, the, the, the motivation for doing it is, um, uh, you know, a, you know, sourcing your own food, clean, like I said, organic. Um, well, you know, it's organic and it's literally farm to table. Um, no, it's from your backyard to table. Backyard farm. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, when you, when we go to the store, I, I feel like we don't always trust what's on the label. Yeah. Um, we find out from lawsuits 10 years after the fact that, oh, hey, by the way, none of that was organic. That was just the name of the brand. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, greenwashing. People yeah. talk about greenwashing. Yeah. 100%. Or it's, you know, it'll have like this official mm -hmm. thing that says, you know, it's green nature approved. And it's like, no, that's their company. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just stamp that on. And I think people do it. And the reason why I was excited about helping with it is because I know that that's actually healthy chicken. Mm -hmm. And also- that it's real chicken. Yeah. And we'll get into yeah. that later. Fake well, meat. But so, I mean, like what kind of got, I think us going on this topic is like the, the, the reality too, of, um, slaughtering any animal is that it's, it's, it's messy, it's tough mm -hmm. and you're taking a life. And, you know, with chickens, you literally, um, not to get too graphic, but you, you turn them upside down and feed them down into this cone where their head pops out the bottom and then you slice their throat and they bleed out. Um, and, uh, it's, which people it's, might say that's cruel that you would do that, but the reality is somebody's doing it. You're buying into Chick Fil A. Someone's doing it. Yeah, yeah, that, for sure. Um, a lot of people would object to doing the act, um, hanging a chicken, grabbing a knife, and and you know slicing a big gaping. Um, yeah, but that's hypocritical. Uh, into the, no, I know, but but the, that's my point. And then they have no problem yeah. buying a, a Chick Fil A sandwich. So. Um, but, it, but it's not easy. It's not fun mm -hmm. to kill, you know, we've got 50 meat birds and over, th over this last weekend, we processed, I think about 23 of them, but wow. That many. Um, yeah. Yeah. So thank you again. Guys, for you, our you guys got it down to like a rhythm. Yeah. So we, we had kind of our assembly line and, um, and again, we're really excited because it's, it's clean, organic, free range. Um, we, we took good care of these birds. Um, they, they got every bit of food they wanted. They got every bit of freedom that they wanted. Um, meat birds, honestly, are incredibly dumb, clumsy animals. And all they want to do is eat. That's I know they're like hanging out right next to them while they're being slaughtered. Like it was no big yeah, deal. It was, it, yeah. They're so but, dumb. But anyway, um, it kind of got me to, to thinking though, cause like I, I don't enjoy killing animals. I don't enjoy yeah. slaughtering animals. Um, it, it, there's a lot of, you know, the, the redeeming factor obviously is like filling my family's freezer um, and, uh, and having meat. And these are big birds, by the way, these are like six and seven pound chickens, which are huge. Like, and they last the, us. They're thick. They're thick. And they last yeah. us like the whole week. Yeah. So, um, like my family, but, um, but anyway, it got me thinking like it, it would be nice to have this meat, um, 
but not have to kill for it. And, uh, but that's life brother. Well, it is. And, and it's actually, that's the circle of life. I mean, that, that's how the animal kingdom functions in, in many ways. I mean, every other species that's, you know, carnivore or omnivore, um, they're killing some sort of other life form, um, even vegetation, but, but I'm saying like they're eating bugs, they're eating other animals, they're eating, you know, something is prey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, at my house, chickens fall prey, uh, to, to us, but they also, I mean, chickens also on a large enough property fall prey to coyotes. They can fall prey to overhead predators like eagles, like chickens are getting eaten one way or the other. They are delicious. And they are like, they don't have a lot of defense mechanisms, but so it is important, I guess, as the farmer, like that's your responsibility to protect them. Um, you know, and protect your, your investment in your meat. But anyway, the point is like, it would be nice to have some kind of meat without having to kill an animal. So are you, oh, hold up, hold up. Are you going to be pro fake meat? Um, no, I'm not really, but I think it's an interesting conversation. And that is what we're talking about today is fake meat. Um, and, uh, some of the pros, some of the cons. And we're not talking about like tofurkey or tofurkey. Like, is that a, is, I don't, is that a, yeah, like, like uh, tofu turkey, like tofu turkey. I think they call I like, it I like tofurkey. So we I have, have turkey. Tofurkey. We have turkeys too here, as you know, or like, like faux chicken or anything. We're not talking about that. We're, we're talking about ficken like it, but like, we're talking <laughs> about like scientists are trying to engineer fake meat. I think in part. Yeah. 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 And sorry to interrupt you, but can I, can I play this video real quick? I want you to yeah, go react, ahead, go to, ahead. This, react go ahead. to this. We are back with the new lab grown chicken. It was just approved for sale in the U.S. Could be handed to your dinner plate. Hey, good morning, George. Americans ate 75 billion pounds of red meat and chicken last year. But what if some of that meat was not raised on farms, but instead of high-tech facilities? I think that's wrong, Scientists by the way. say that could be good for the environment and your health, and soon it could be on menus. ABC wrong? This morning, the USDA has approved cell-cultivated meat to be sold to the public for the first time. So that's where it all starts. Just a few cells. Two cultivated meat producers now getting the green light to begin commercially selling their chicken, not raised on a farm, but in a facility. The meat is grown using real animal cells and large bioreactors fed with nutrients. I recently got a tour of California-based Upside Foods, the nation's first and largest cultivated meat producer. You're making chicken in there. Yeah, so if you look at this, this is a approximately a 200 plus liter tank. We take cells from a chicken or an egg. It takes two weeks to grow the equivalent of one chicken, a thousand chickens or a hundred thousand chickens. So you're saying in this factory, you can make more meat faster and cleaner than an average farmer. Well, ultimately, yes. The company says cell cultivated meat could help feed the world's booming population using a fraction of the land and water of animal farming and help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Many experts say more study is needed. I got to try this cell cultivated chicken at the facility in California, guys. I got to say the texture was a little bit different, but it did taste like chicken. The company says they hope to get it on restaurant menus in the next few weeks, then maybe on store shelves in the next five years. And dozens of startup companies are getting in on the game, guys. So this was months ago. So that means it's probably on menu somewhere. My thing yeah. is. I, I actually did a bunch of research on that company, Upside Foods. Really? Yeah. But what's your thing? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. You go we're first. We're you talking first. about so tell me scientists gave us the atomic bomb. Okay. They gave us the COVID, <laughs> you know, um, and a lot of people like they're going to say it's safe. They're going to say, of course it's safe. It's fine. It's, it's actual meat. It's actual cells that we're growing into. It. Okay. That sounds like, you know, a good A to B. It makes sense. But they are also the same people, the same scientists that were like, yeah, no, Teflon's fine. Oh yeah, um, asbestos. Yeah, that's fine. You know, lead in gasoline is fine. There's no, there's no side effects. It's not until 10, 20, 30 years later, when a generation has been affected, that all of a sudden they're like, Oop, "My bad," and then they pay a fine. Nobody gets any money except for the government. Yeah. And for me, I want to say hell no to it. But you can go ahead with your pro no, so, so, fake meat. So before I talk pro, I'll, okay. I'll add to the cons then. Yeah, because that that's the big. So trust is really what this comes down 100% to. 100% trust. trust. And, and it's the question of. No trust. Can we trust the food, but can we also trust the quote experts? And I think that um, this period in our history uh, as, a, as a country in particular mm -hmm. uh, is definitely a time of questioning. Can we trust the experts? Because to your point, like we have a body of work, a, a history of examples um, you know, like you said, everything from lead to Teflon to, 
um, you know, our government and our also what and, they did to the chickens and, and our corporations, um, <clears throat> you know, not giving us the, the full yeah. story or be or or being negligent. Well, at least say where maybe they didn't know, mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't necessarily, um, you know, overturn every stone to ensure like, hey, wait a minute, is this dangerous? Um, and so like this question of can, can we trust the experts just adding to your, your, your point here. If we look at agriculture, um, that's one area where I think retrospectively looking back, the overuse of herbicides, pesticides, antibiotics, um, GMO, like gen genetic modification, yeah. um, we've, we, we're now, I would say in modern society, beginning to look back and say like, okay, there's some problems here. Yeah. They're finding out the roundup is actually causing cancer. Yep. <clears throat> you look at the medical community, the way they've um, handled COVID and the, in the information, yeah. um, some would say miss or disinformation around around COVID. You know, over the last few years, um, the OSHA mandate, uh, where you know employers uh, were going to be forced by OSHA to to mandate the COVID vaccine whether they wanted to or not, um, cram the COVID vaccine down on millions of Americans um, with an untested. You know, I like look. A lot of people feel a lot of different ways about it, but <clears throat> the truth is, like, there was no long term tests on on the COVID vaccine, and and there's still now a, a there's a lot of evidence that has continued to come out suggesting that, hey, that was, we'll, we'll say, to put it lightly, that was maybe not a great idea, Yeah, is, is what a lot of the evidence is showing now. Um, there's drug recalls. Um, you look back even historically even further, this Tuskegee experiments where uh, the medical community and the government were experimenting on on black men, yeah. giving them syphilis yep. um, and not telling them that they, sorry, I'm sorry. I don't believe they were giving them syphilis, but they were telling them they were treating syphilis mm -hmm. and they were not. Right. I, I said that wrong. Um, you look back at like psychology in the medical community, giving like lobotomies, cutting, cutting out portions of people's brain. Um, well, a lot of the argument is, well, that like was that. then. This is now. We're yeah, better no, now. Well, well, it's like then is going to be 50 years from now. Th then will be now. Right. Um, and it's going to be easy to look back and see where we went wrong. But then it's 50 years ago. And that's one of the complaints about like the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, is that historically they're very reactive, not proactive or preventative. So they'll say, oh, yeah, that thing turns out that thing was really bad. So now we're going to implement regulation around mm -hmm. it um, to prevent it. So I think that's a super valid question. And I and I share those concerns. And I think a lot of people share those concerns around this topic of, of you know, like lab grown meat or fake meat. There's certainly questions. Um, that, that I think are need to be asked. So, um, but look, like just reeling it back in going, going back to the, the I think to high level in this conversation, I think just, let's just talk about what is this fake meat, because it can be a few different things. And there's a few different angles to this conversation. So people have probably heard of like the impossible burger or mm -hmm. impossible beef, um, beyond beef. These are things you can buy like in, in the grocery store, or you can get like an impossible burger at certain restaurants, which is, um, Bill Gates, right? He owns Impossible burger. I think he's got an investment in it. Yeah. But it's, it's basically plant-based. Um, it's, it, it is plant-based burgers. Mm. It's plant-based meat. Um, it's vegan and, uh, it, a lot of people would say it, and it tastes that way. Um, but, uh, that's, that's one sort of, um, approach to it's this like faux, to fake meat, faux meat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the more recent though, and, and interesting ones is this, uh, lab grown meat that you just showed here with upside foods, which is California based company. Um, and th they call it lab grown. They'll call it cultivated. They'll call it cell based. They'll call it slaughter free. They'll call it anything but fake. Yeah. Well, yeah, fair enough. Um, I do think it's interesting because here's the thing, going back to my original kind of opener here. It's it's not fun to to take a life and eat an animal. Like I like I think um in most cases, most humans, um, I think if they're being honest, as delicious as look, I I love steak. You love steak. Oh, love it. Um we love chickens. I love fish. I love fish. Mm -hmm. Like I love animal protein. I really do. So good for you. But I don't like that an animal has to die in order for me to enjoy that. I'm with you. Um, I've been there when they shot the bolt in the head and for, I've seen a drop for cattle. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. I remember as a young slaughterhouse. Yeah. My, when, you worked in a, uh, didn't you work in like a poultry factory? For yeah. Like yeah. For like, for like four or five days. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, no, yeah. 
Well, um, when we were slaughtering our birds, I, I commented to Ilea, to your sister, to my wife. Um, and I say, when I say that, I say that for you guys. I, he obviously knows his sister's my wife. Um, but I said, to, I, I was like, this would suck as a job, like to actually like slaughter animals all day and process animals. Like the smell is a hard work too, by the way, turns out. Um, and they're massive factories. But I think, again, most people, if they're being honest about it, probably don't, as much as you love meat, as much as you love animal products and protein, it's kind of not great yeah. that you have to take take a life and kill an animal in order for that. But it is one of the reasons, by the way, that I I do justify beef um, from just if we're talking about kind of minimizing the killing, because one one cow, one life can feed a lot of people for a long time. Like I think both of our families, we each buy what a quarter cow or half a cow, mm -hmm. um, freeze it. And we feed our families for a long time. And we months, eat kind of a lot of beef months every day. I'm eating meat. Whereas like the chicken only goes so far. Um, and, uh, you know, smaller animals like only go so fish only goes so far. Um, but you know, take there's also a cognitive difference between a cow and a chicken. Like sure. a chickens, yeah. they're so dumb. Chick chickens also, especially meat birds, uh, one of the things my, my wife and I have also talked about those little bitches would, they would, if you fell over unconscious, if there's They're enough birds, you to death. they would eat you a whole, they, they, oh, yeah. those things would eat you if they could, dude, you were cutting the necks on one cow or on one chicken and they're over there trying to like lap up the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I tried to keep them away. I know. <laughs> I sprayed People them with that. I was like. But they're they're kind of barbaric. I mean, they're descendants of dinosaurs for sure. I do think, totally descendants and people of will think that we're kind of a piece of shit for have, having done this stuff. Having but, done what? Like having killed animals and stuff like that. But like the reality is, if you're Anybody, eating the meat, you need to understand what the cost is. Yes, that's why I roll my eyes. It's like, yeah. you can't. There's too many people who have a dramatic disconnect between their buffalo mm -hmm. wild wings, yeah, and the fact that 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 set of chicken wings came from a bird, yeah. Um, that was alive. I remember as a kid, um, I was like 12 or 13 or whatever it was. And they were having to put a cow down. There was something wrong with it and broke a leg or broke a hip or whatever it was. And they were just like, it's going to cost too much. We're going to have to put it down. I had been with that cow for months, mm -hmm. you know, helping feed it, taking care of it and being around when they, they have this like weird looking like air pistol gun. Um, in this particular case, he actually put a shell in, but a, a bolt just comes yeah. out. And I remember being there and like feeling the ground hit. I cried as a kid. Like, cause like that was something I took care of, but I also ate it like five days later. And I think I understood at a young age, okay, there's a cost to my life. Like uh, there's a cost to, you know, the, the food isn't necessarily free. Yes, it costs in time. We have to purchase it, but like, I think it's important for people to understand if you're going to eat meat, like there is a cost, there is a life. Um, and also like it was, it wasn't easy. It's not like something like I got used to it either. Yeah. And, and kind of just adding on to that, like, um, don't, don't let your meat spoil. Like don't let your yeah. animal products spoil because like, don't again, waste. like it's not just, it's not just that it's bad to waste food just in general, but like, again, some, an animal died to provide you with that sustenance. So like to let, um, steaks go bad in your fridge or, um, you know, to not eat, you know, that, that chicken that you, so what he's like saying whatever. is don't let it go bad. Don't eat bad meat. Cause that's different. Well, yeah, <laughs> I've eaten things. bad meat too. And it come but backfire. Here's, but here's, All right. Here's, tell me the, pro, tell me the bullshit pros. Yeah. So look, here's, here's the argument that I think is pretty convincing from upside foods. And I'm going to try to think of this from like a a, like open a your mind space try not to think scientific. about scientific i'm on star trek what would star trek do okay, yeah okay. yeah exactly okay. and that's kind of what this is because uh, again that's where i go back to is like let's just say we could have what we actually say we want here um which is to not have to kill an animal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to reduce um you know all of the uh land and and uh, i'll just say the resource intensive uh, aspects that come with, with agriculture. Um, that all sounds pretty good and also not have to like feed and raise animals for as long as it takes to, to actually get them to the point where you could slaughter them. Mm. Um, again, high level. That sounds really great. Yeah. Pause, um, pause. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say what we said today at lunch. <clears throat> 
if it was done right, it doesn't actually cost that much. The way the farms used to be done. Why not? We'll get into that. Okay. We'll get into that. I'm just, I want to keep a really high level. Okay. High I level. Give you, I will give you your, your, uh, I will give you the floor, but all I'm saying right now is, uh, it sounds it sounds good. Okay. All of that sounds good, um, and that's where we're starting at. Go ahead and I get into too, your propaganda. I too have doubts as to whether it can be achieved, but I agree that like, so, hey, this is a good aim. This is a good goal. It'd be nice one day to get there. Yeah, I just want version twelve. I don't want version. You don't want to yeah roll around in like this experimental phase. So, but the question I ask is like, okay, if I just want the chicken wing, do I actually need the chicken? Like, if if all I want is like you know, like Buffalo Wild Wings, just imagine like the amount of chicken they must go through, chicken wings specifically. Um, bird only has two wings. You get on a, on a chicken wing, you get like the, the forearm part uh, and then you get like the, the meteor upper arm part. So per bird, you're coming away with four sort of chicken wings as like Buffalo Wild Wings would define it. So obviously as many wings as people eat, like if you, eat, if you get like a, you know, 12, 12 count or whatever they come in now it's that's three birds worth of wings mm -hmm. now obviously they're not just killing those birds um and and taking the wings and the rest goes to waste like those birds are being breasted out like ideally they're going they're those the guts go to hot dogs <laughs> oh, God, no <laughs> well maybe um but uh so but i think it's an interesting question like what if i only need a specific part of this animal like is there a way to grow that part versus or or roughly that part versus the whole animal. And that's really kind of what Upside Foods is working on. Now they they actually are making real chicken from real chicken cells. So that's where they start from. And essentially what they're doing is they're taking the cells and providing the nutrients that any cell needs. So they're providing it's a it's a combination of a bunch of stuff that I honestly I didn't remember, but it's like proteins, it's um I think like aminos, it's um, fats and other things. So they're they're the delivery is synthetic but what they're providing to th those cells is real. It's real nutrients and, and real balanced like proteins, vitamins and other things. So they say. Well, oh, sorry, high we'll, level, high we'll level, get, high we'll level. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, but in doing so, they're able to allow these cells to grow and multiply. Like that's what they do. Essentially in a Petri dish, if you, if you, if you take the cells, you provide the nutrients and you um, keep it sanitary, avoid any like bacteria, um, then those cells will, will multiply and grow and eventually create um, this fake chicken. Uh, and I say fake because it's lab grown, but in terms of its cellular structure, it's it's essentially the same as, as chicken um, because it starts from those chicken cells. Um, and I think that's interesting. I'm like, okay, well, uh, we've got an increasing population with with which is eating lots of meat. Uh, and by the way, tons of in terms of like people eating meat around the world uh there's been an enormous amount of people that have shifted away from red meat so less beef and cow and chicken has increased exponentially so like there's a lot of demand for chicken and um what upside foods is proposing is something that's humane it's affordable it's sustainable as far as the you know at least again in theory can i have you pull up that video uh about the amount of animals killed per year. I, I think this is some interesting perspective before I go on. Um, I think this is worth us pausing and now watching these for a killing second. Are these killings or yeah, so how much So what this we... is, this goes through how many animals, I think you'll find several parts of this interesting. I did, um, and, and I think other people will just be amazed, but um, it starts with the like roughly, I'm sure the, the list is longer than this, but some of the most common animals that are killed every year and how many for human consumption. I'll tell you this, chickens are at the top of the list okay. and it's by far. Really? But go ahead and, and start this. I just think it's interesting. Turtles? So, hold up, hold up. 4,600 turtles a year. Whoa, scorpions are eating? Who? Camels, apparently 3 million are eating every year. People eating donkeys this and is, mules? And this is globally, by the way. Horses, wow. <clears throat> Well, fish, that makes sense. Herring. You'll notice that oh. like the really high numbers are, are C, you know, C or like... Dogs? 25 million of them? Hold on, pigeons? pigeons? <laughs> Eat seven... Whoa, 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 whoa. I got to go back on this one. Hold on a second. 
Guinea pigs, seventy million a year are eaten. Right. I thought they're just pets. Who's eating it? I know it ain't us Americans. Yeah, I don't, um, Americans keep guinea pigs as pets. Also, kids. dogs, by the way, twenty-five million dogs a year. <sighs> That's definitely well. First outside of all, the U.S. I can kind of understand. There's a lot of meat there, and I have a story about thinking, or at least someone told me I might have eaten dog. Do you want to hear the story real quick? Mm-hmm. I was in the Philippines. Um, no offense, Philippine people, but I was having a hard time with my stomach, you know, from the food there. And I was eating this, you know, what I thought was chicken. And uh, I was asking, hey, what happened to the dogs I was hanging out with yesterday? And the guy just looked down at his food and shrugged his shoulders. And I was like, no, no, no. And then they changed the subject that I was just like trying to get it out of like, am I eating dog? And they all just laughed. So I, I think they were playing a joke on me. I don't think they really... I don't think I really ate dog. I don't know. Anybody else who's been to the Philippines or if you're from the Philippines, like comment, if that, if that was a, a, that was a good joke. If it was, cause I was paranoid the whole day. I was like, am I eating the dogs I was playing with yesterday? Cause they were just in a little kennel, you know, Hey, either way. You might've been, who knows? Uh, but anyways, guineas are so small is what I'm saying. Well, that's why you got to kill so many. <sighs> okay. So sharks, cows, 300 million goats are more than cows. Lamb, I can understand. Well, so pause again. So, so just just keep in mind, like, so there's 500 million lobsters killed and 300 million cows. As we said before, one cows cow goes so yeah. One cow goes a long way. So you're right. Um, the size of the animal does have some impact here. But go ahead. Sheep. Wow. Turkey, 656 million. I get the salmon. Crabs. So you see, like some of the yeah. seafood is like really tuna. High. It's harvested tuna's massive are, tuna's quantities. Are expensive rabbits, one point two billion. Yeah, that's surprising. Where? Who's hunting that many rabbits? They don't hunt them. They oh, they breed them. Raise them. Pigs, yeah. one point five billion. Wow. Oct. Whoa. Who's eating two billion <laughs> octopuses? <laughs> I don't know, man. Huh. Well, I think a lot of it, a lot of it will go into sushi. Uh, it's like a, that's like a fine. What, what's dish. the name? What's the calamar? They, is it, cal- calamari? Is it calamari? Is it? I think it's like. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. See, notice how they rename it. They don't want you to be like, yeah, yeah right. you're eating squid. <laughs> Didn't you eat squid in New York City, little yeah, bitty ones? Dude, I I will eat any Bro, and any and all seafood. Wild. I love you are seafood. wild. Oh, Jake, you'll be fine. Meanwhile, six hours later, ugh, I'm throwing up. Me? I got a me. Oh yeah, you were throwing up. Well. I was sick in New York City. You were? Bahamas. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. So you're saying I ate the squid, but, but yeah, you, you, were you got sick. Yeah, I got yeah. sick. I can't eat it. Anyways. Barracuda, that surprises me. Oysters. I don't think that bother. Goose. Oh, th- this kind of makes sense. Shrimp. Like you said, they're small, so it makes sense. Ew. I don't know. I don't like catfish. I used to eat catfish. I like catfish. It just tastes too muddy to me. Yeah, I mean, it is. Catfish are bottom feeders, so like, it, it, I mean. I remember when I was a kid. They're not exactly a they used to go fish. But. Uh, and fish catfish down by the dam mm-hmm. on the uh, reservoir side. And they'd, they'd be gigantic. Mm-hmm. And everybody was so excited about how heavy they were. And I always thought it tasted like dirt. And I didn't like it. Yeah, I mean that's that's what they where they live and at the bottom. God, I have no idea what a pangaceus yeah. is. Sardines, fourteen billion. Holy shit! Seventy billion chickens a year. Yeah. In the world. And I actually saw some. So the research that I did showed really anywhere from seventy to eighty billion. Let me give you some con. Let me give you like some so, some some. Uh, some context here, bro. Just to put it in perspective, if we say seventy-five billion chickens are killed each year, that's roughly two hundred and five million per day. Say that again. If seventy-five billion chickens are kill- killed per year globally, the math works out to two hundred and five million chickens killed every day in the world. Two hundred and five million. I'm kind of impressed with per day. how they can even do that. Right? Well, meat birds. So um, meat birds like ours, 
from the point that they were like basically brand new chicks to when we harvested them was about three months. Okay. So that's pretty fast. So they grow very fast. And, and, um, like I said, they're thick pigs take about nine months. Cows take about two years. And that's one of the arguments for something like what upside food is doing with lab grown chicken. Two weeks is all it takes to go from the initial cell to something that's edible. So it's faster, but also you don't have the burden on, um, on all the resources. Again, cows take a lot of land. They take a lot of acreage in order to like for two years to grow. They create a lot of waste, um, in, you know, whether it's cows or pigs, chickens, even they'll sing shit a lot. <laughs> hey, right. They create, uh, there's a lot of chicken poop. Um, but if you could have, you know, essentially waste free, um, land free, create not land free entirely. Cause these factories actually are pretty complex and big. Um, but what they're growing, there's, there's no skin, no bones, no nervous system. Um, but also therefore there's no immune system. So the, so like lab grown chicken and lab grown chicken cells are, are very susceptible, I guess, to, um, bacteria. So, uh, that is a problem. If anything gets in there, like basically the, the bacteria will, um, rapidly spread throughout the entire culture and destroy because they're feeding it nutrients, which yes. would probably and also feed. And there's no immune system. So wow. it will feed on those cells and destroy that entire batch or whatever. So a big, big, um, uh, priority for upside foods in their, like in their spaces is sanitation. Um, they do have to use some amount of antibiotics initially, I guess, in the very, very early stage. I don't know. Um, but they're not doing it. They're not injecting the meat itself with antibiotics. Um, so, you know, I, and what's interesting is like, there's a lot of people, by the way, who will, who will complain about this idea of like processed fake, um, animals, but like, there's a lot of Americans, especially who eat all kinds of shit. They eat all kinds of processed, Doritos, Fritos, fake food. Exactly. Like, cheese puffs. Che like Cheetos is not real food. No. Um, you know, neither is the gigantic big gulp, you know, Dr. Peppers that people will drink three a day or whatever. Like that's not real foodie. That's not real drink. That's, that is all synthetic nonsense. I went on a trip with a guy for, I think it was 12 or 15 days. And I'm not going to say his name, but he did not drink water the entire time. What? Yeah. He woke up, died Dr. Pepper. There's technically water, I guess. And that that's what he would say. There's water inside of it. I'm like, buddy, yeah, buddy. All right. So do you have something you're going to show me? Yeah. This is really poignant to I what you're saying. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Amen. Dude, I quote that all the time. And and he's right. Like, I, but but I think I do think from some of the research that like again that I did preparing for this, I think a lot of this does come from the space of of hoping that this will be a solution to to the problems, which again are uh you know, animal cruelty and, and just killing of uh like mm -hmm. harvesting animals, um re the drain on resources or just the, the overall expense and time and, and energy required and waste that comes from animal agriculture, um, meeting the increasing needs supposedly of, you know, a growing population. Um, I think that there is the should of whether we should, I think that's there. <clears throat> um, to me, it's the almost idea the reverse. The, the question is whether they could, that, that is the question. It's not so much like that they're concerned of whether they could, it's <clears throat> like, we should do this is what science is saying. I think they got to prove it first. Yeah, but next thing you know, they're going to be bringing dinosaurs back and we're going to have Jurassic Park in real life because chickens are dinosaurs, bro. One of the jokes with Upside Foods <laughs> is that there may be, like, in theory, if you could take the cell of any animal, you could create that meat, mm -hmm. um, which could mean that people could eat, like, exotic foods all the time. You could eat, you could eat, you know, if this, if the science actually checks out and this, this whole approach actually proves to be viable. You could essentially eat like rhinoceros all the time. Mm -hmm. You could eat, you know, I don't know, whatever kind of random, weird protected delicacy. But, in, but people have said you could also technically probably lab grow like, like dinosaurs, like mm -hmm. they did in Jurassic Park. I just feel like there's going to be something off where, um, 
it's, we're basically eating muscle when we eat meat. Mm -hmm. So there's something about the life that was lived, the use of that muscle. It's not always the same cell mm -hmm. for muscles. There's other things. There's proteins. There's things that um, the nutrients that that chicken or cow consumed, converted, used for its own life force, and then we consume it. I feel like there's a lot we don't understand maybe yet. I, for one, would not partake of any of this stuff. I understand from a high level, from your point of view, sci-fi wise, this shit's cool. But like if in real life, if Star Trek was real and the replicator was real and on, on Star Trek, there was reference, ah, that's just fake meat, you know, whatever it is, because it's replicated. I wouldn't eat that stuff either. Like, yeah. So, so here's what I came down. Like for me, I agree. I agree with you. But knowing way. you, you would try it. Oh, I would definitely try it. Um, and I would be honest about whether I enjoyed it too, by the way, but, um, I am biased towards the real thing. And for, for the, I think really the reasons that you've said, I mean, I, I, I align mm -hmm. on those like, um, and for me raising these chickens in my backyard for the last, mm -hmm. uh, you know, three months and we've fed them organic food every day. Um, we've kept them in a good environment and, uh, and, you know, we prepared and harvested those birds and, and, um, I have every bit of confidence in like eating those animals. I know where they came from. I know they were, like you said, like they're real animals, but and I know that they will sustain and, and nourish my family. I want people to be independent of the system. Unfortunately, something like this, there will be a time when they will outlaw real meat. Fast forward 100 years, if this stuff is progressing more, they will outlaw regular meat. And what that does is that puts someone subservient to continually having to purchase. Yeah, I like the idea of being independent of the system where someone can grow their own food, their crops. Their crops then feed their animals. They eat some of the crops, like the corn, the wheat, but they're feeding that also to the cows. Then they eat the cows or the chickens. It's this cycle, this beautiful cycle that happens where the manure Actually, then, you know, is fertilizer for your crops. There was a way that it used to work that people could have 20, 30, 40, 50 chickens, Regen 10 cows. Regenerative farming. Regenerative farming. Yeah. You can do it right. And the cool thing is that pulls you and makes you independent of purchasing. Mm -hmm. And the lot, a lot of the people investing in this aren't people like PETA, which they might be, um, or people who are you know, want to do it out of good faith, it's investment companies because they yeah. know this shit is going to make them billions. And eventually those people will enact laws upon which you and I, as normal people, can't buy regular meat. Yeah. Now that's way yeah. out there. No, I think it's a great observation. That's one of the things that like, as I looked at this, that was one of my cons too. Go, go back to the video that you showed of Upside Foods, if you don't mind. I want to get some of the shots of the factory. Yeah, you got it. Um, where do you because want because I think it it supports exactly what you said. Uh, I just want to get a few shots of the inside of the factory, and then and then I have some some su supporting commentary chicken. for you. It was just approved for sale in the U.S. Could be headed to your dinner plate. Looks they like a chicken breast. Americans ate seventy five billion pounds of red meat. And you can skip around year. if you want. If sure. That, could use or scrub through or whatever. Just a few cells. Two Keep going. There you go. Okay. To begin commercial. Push pause. No, just kind of let it play through this. Skip around to some of the other stuff with those big tanks. Facility. The meat is grown using real animal cells and large bioreactors fed with nutrients. I recently got like that's California-based Upside Foods, the nation's first. So like that's complex looking. Yeah, that's high tech. So in seeing the the manufacturing process of if you call it that, you probably not manufacturing, but um, and then also hearing how it's described, it sounds like a complex and somewhat delicate process. Um, I can tell you in contrast to that, it is not com complex or delicate to raise chickens. It's pretty damn easy. It takes some work, but like, mm. like I said, chickens are dinosaurs. Like, Bro, like, like the actual yeah. chicken, you just feed it a couple times a day. Our chickens have been out in the same coop, whether it's a uh, hundred degrees outside or negative 10 in the winter. Um, they get hot and they get cold, but, and we take some steps to, to try to help them a little bit, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, they, it's not a puppy. You don't have to take, no, no, like, like they are, um, 
<laughs> they're kind of bred to to need human intervention. Like it, a chicken's not going to last very long in the wild necessarily, but um, but like they're low maintenance. And essentially, uh, I was looking at it today, and honestly, like I got to thinking that animals, like agri animal agriculture, farm animals, it's kind of like nature's refrigerator a little bit. Like you're storing yeah. that, that food, you're storing that meat while it's walking around on your property hmm. and nourishing itself. And then when it's time at the appropriate time, then you harvest that animal and you can, you know, you can begin to consume it. Um, but it's, uh, the, the point is two very different, um, go to market, uh, channels there from, you know, a chicken becoming your meal to something that's going to be grown in a lab becoming your meal. I look at that option, like what Upside Foods is is presenting as far as that, again, I'll call it the manufacturing process. Um, I think it is wrought with potential problems. Um, everything from, like I said, if, if uh, bacteria gets into the mix, the whole thing's wiped out. Um, what happens in those areas where if there's some sort of significant social unrest or catastrophic event and, you know, power is lost or, um, you know, God forbid, like, what if there's war? What if, you know, a bomb goes up, like a bomb goes off in one of those factories or, or, you know, it's hit by a missile strike or something like potentially in t if we've moved yeah. to a point where large portions of civilization in our country or around the world are supported by that type mm -hmm. of food, it becomes really easy to cut off food supply to certain areas or to destroy this, the source of food. Well, we're seeing that now when, um, when like these big bird, you know, farms have like a, an outbreak of a disease and millions of birds die because mm -hmm. they're all you know, confined in these big, huge warehouses. And then all of a sudden there's a low supply of chicken happened a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and I think, uh, ideally you wouldn't have that in one of these facilities. You wouldn't have this like, you know, bird flu or something mm -hmm. like where, but, um, you do, I think there's some kind of, kind of risk because like, let me put it this way. If a missile hit my house right now, um, some of my birds might be injured or, or, you know, some of them might even be fried. Uh, but a good chunk of them would just be like, all right, well that sucked. Uh, yeah. Is there some food around? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they would just move on and I could go out and I could eat mm -hmm. that chicken. So like, again, you talk about like in the case of extreme societal collapse or catastrophe where you're, you know, cut off from, from going down the road to get Wendy's or whatever, or in this case, Chick-fil-A, it's going to be way worse if your food is coming from, you know, a lab mm -hmm. because there's going to be all kinds of resource constraints there. Um, Meanwhile, if you've got, you know, just well, if the poultry power gets or down, chickens. yeah, if you got a chicken in your backyard, you can go have yeah. dinner. Yeah. So it's, it, I think that's a, a, a potential problem. I think you touched on this too corruption, profit motive, manipulation of, of what's actually going into that food. There's, there's, I think a lot of issues there. Cause like when you talk about investors, like, um, I think there's just a lot of opportunity for this to get pushed through when maybe perhaps there's more research. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, needed. this is some of the comments on that video I showed you. Uh, one of them says FDA also approves so many toxic chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Basically. And he goes on to say that are banned in other countries. And I was listening to a podcast the other day where they were talking about some of the chemicals that are actually made in China. And we use, forgive me for not knowing the tech, you know, but it was like a really long name. It's banned in China. They are not allowed to use them on their crops, but they make it. <laughs> and they ship it here and outsource it or out to America. Uh, America it. consumes it yeah. and they actively have entire firms jobs who are to suppress and remove and control bad data on it mm. in America. Wow. They're like click what, farms. Do you, know, do you know? I forget the name. Um, the spot, shoot. Um, it's all right. I'm, I don't know, but, but it's one of them long, not like names. I don't know what they are, but this, what, you know, certain chemicals we put on it. And they use like click farms to like, nah, that's wrong, blah, blah, blah. Or they'll, you know, shut down a site by um, where they go in and refresh the page yeah. millions of times yeah. and it shuts a, down the website. Dis, what is it? Distributed denial of service? Or something, something, yeah. Like Whatever it is, they do that stuff quite a bit. And it's interesting to me how it's banned in that country, but it's okay here. And we're just like, yeah, FDA approved. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, I think a lot of people have lost trust in yeah. the systems that be. Um, but I mean, like... Um, one person says, uh, they better be labeling this crap, you know, and, but the reality is I, I don't think that they will. 
It'll be labeled as chicken. What do you mean by that? Meaning like they should label fake chicken or oh, fake meat. Lab grown. Lab grown. Slaughter free. Slaughter free. They're going to come up with something like that. Slaughter free. That's brilliant marketing actually. That's um, good. And then, but they're not going to. People are just going to be buying chicken, paying chicken prices and they're like, you know, it's not going to be labeled. I uh, I think that this is also why, if you, unless you got any more data. Well, let me just, I'll just yeah, say yeah. this, uh, kind of final commentary on this. Like it comes down to trust. This whole conversation, I think, yeah. comes down to, can we trust um, these companies? Can we trust our government? Can we trust agriculture, science, all of these, these different groups, which again, historically, there have been some questions around. Um, and can we even trust the motivation? Like people will talk about, um, you know, again, climate change, mm -hmm. um, the science behind climate change, as well as agriculture emissions, what's claimed there, uh, food demand, like a lot of the data around this, there, there are some gaps and people have some questions. Um, I'm not going to get into all of that. That's, that's, that's a, an entirely, you know, it's a different podcast entirely, but like the world economic forum is, is one of the driving factors pushing for this type of meat replacement. Um, and there are a lot of people that are saying, well, okay, hang on a minute though. Like you're, you're basing the need for this on a lot of things that maybe foundationally I'm not seeing convincing evidence yet. And, um, and I think that that's okay. I think that's okay that people are saying, well, like, let's just ask a few more questions. Mm. Let's come to a consensus on the data around why this is needed. But beyond that, the trust also comes to like, okay, now we have this fake meat. Is it like, is it everything that you say it is? And is it everything that you say it's not? Um, because I think like for me, it's really three things are built around trust. So, so taste is one thing, like for people to adopt this and actually for me, I'll say, I don't know, pe people are not me, so people can do what they want. But for me, it's these three things. It's got to taste like, it's got to taste good. I don't know if it has to taste like chicken because... 200 years from now, like you said, like Star Trek people, like, I don't, will they even know what real meat tastes like? If this thing actually is for real and takes off, like they just want it to taste good. So I think that's important. Um, and I think also it needs to be safe and nutritious. Like people need to be able to trust. I need to be able to trust that this is in fact safe and nutritious. And I'm not there yet. Um, I believe that they've been able to grow a replica chicken that looks like it. And on paper, uh, has the same building blocks, but I think to your point earlier, talking about kind of the cellular structure and the muscle tissue of, of a animal that has lived and breathed and died. Um, is this going to nourish me the same way that it, that, um, animal prey nourishes predators throughout the circle of life? I don't know that. And is it going to be safe? Like, you know, for the longest time, um, people have talked like there's been MSG in, in foods, there's been GMO um, in food that's, that's, you know, harvested and created, um, all these sort of synthetic ways that science and, and ag has screwed with our food sources that we've now kind of begun to turn around, like you said, roundup. And we're like, Hey, maybe this wasn't a great idea. Mm -hmm. We're now, the data is now showing that there's some effects to this. This is not without a cost. So, um, I think before we convert like entire economies around the world and do away with animal agriculture, we need to know like, is this in fact safe? Do we have longitudinal studies that prove that, that this approach to food is not going to kill us all? <laughs> Dude, they just, then, they've seen dollar signs. I know, I know. And, and, but, but that's the third point is the dollar signs. Is it economical? I think we need to ask the question, like, can we actually even afford to, to, eat food this way, because you talked about some of the ways that some of the risk that this poses to people. If we get to a point as a society where your food is generated in a way that you don't even understand and it's grown in a lab and you don't know how it got from a cell to on your dinner plate and you can't replicate it and you don't know exactly what's going into it and what's the process, um, there's certainly potential like if we're talking economics for someone to come along and hijack that food source and jack those prices way up. Um, 
and you not be able to influence that because you're, we're not as a society. And then you're in like the, the Soylent Green territory where, you know, you're, you're eating food that you don't know what it is. And uh, it's, it's being provided to you, you know, by your government or municipality and you can't grow it yourself. And, and so I think it's got to be economical and sustainable. It's got to be affordable and reasonable for people um, in, in terms of like, is it, does it cost as much as chicken or less? By the way, some of this stuff, the plant-based meat um, is cheaper. Like for, for like a pound of like what looks like ground beef, a pound of ground beef you can get for like three or four bucks instead of the what, whatever it is now, like seven or eight bucks. Uh, we don't buy I I feel like ground meat from the grocery store. But those are the things. To, to build trust for me, it comes down to those three things. Is it, does it taste good? Is it safe and nutritious? And is it economical? That's what I would say. That like That's my bar. That's what they're going to meet for me. I think it's going to have to be 50 years of doing it before I would trust it. Because like That's the fair. reality yeah. is they told us cigarettes were fine. Mm -hmm. um, there, it, there is a business model where it's just like profits now, um, consequences later. We saw that with the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. They knew it. Yeah. They knew it was addicting people. They didn't care. They didn't care that some of the, even their heart medicines that they were producing was actually killing like tens of thousands of people. They knew it and they got fined a billion dollars later, but they had already made 20. So do I trust my food source entirely in somebody else's hands? I mean, we, we do kind of now when I mean, people do just go to the store and purchase it, but Dude, I, I just don't, I don't trust it. No, you're right. I mean, I'm, and you said it already, like lead, asbestos, Roundup, right. Teflon. Like there's a lot of these things where the, the profit motive made it very easy to say, hey, yeah, this is the thing we're going to sprint yeah. towards because they see dollar signs well, and this, we're not going to like FDA, gonna take a minute to like to, to do uh, our due diligence. Yeah, because we're talking about the FDA or who's ever making the food pyramid. They put Lucky yeah, Charms yeah, yeah. above yeah. meat. Food pyramid. Food pyramid. A joke. When, it is a joke. When I was in school, yeah, like that's that also has a lot to do with like um, food stamps and stuff like that. Because if you can get on there, it, it's approved for certain things. So, yeah. anyways, that's for another day. But they they they've just manipulated food so much nobody trusts it anymore. I mean, like mm -hmm. the FDA is just like kind of a bit of a joke. It's funded by most of the the big organizations, so that's the way they get their funding is through a lot of these manufacturers of food. So, if I mean, my doctor basically with my heart was telling me to avoid meat. And it's like those studies upon which all these doctors go off of, it seems to be, they just asked people if they're eating meat. Well, what was that wrapped in? Was that a burger? That's not the same as a steak. Was it, you know, are you dipping it in Chick-fil-A sauce? That's not the same as eating a, a, a chicken. Or if you're eating like Popeye's. Right. Does that even count as meat, like compared to organic free range chicken? I think that they're counting it all as one. Or so, organic grass fed beef. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, so my doctor tells me to avoid meat. Well, I did the complete opposite and I did meat only. And that was the best I felt in years. Mm -hmm. My brain fog. It's a carnivore gone. diet. Dude, it's real. I lost so Michaela much weight. Kayla Peterson would be proud of you. Yeah. Is that... Um, That's Jordan Peterson's Jordan daughter. Peterson. She's all about it. She, well, she that's, all she, that's all she eats. Yeah. Because yeah, she has a huge issue. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally don't... I will never trust this. I don't trust these big, massive organizations like this. I don't think that... I mean, we jump into it too quick. Well, um, so tangent on... Quick tangent on yeah. the carnivore diet. Um, there's a lot of evidence out there that, that suggests that um, one of the reasons the carnivore diet works is because of all the shit that they put on non-organic um, plants. So like if you're eating like a really high, like you would think, oh, if I want to be healthy, I need to yeah. get lots of nutrients and vitamins and, and, and um, you know, essentials from fruits and vegetables. Well, if you're not getting organic and even sometimes in some cases, even if you are, if it's something marked organic, there's, there's all kinds of articles and, and um, sort of things where people have come to realize that like there's stuff coming in imports from other countries that are marked organic that are not actually organic. But if you're just eating regular vegetables and fruit, like there's so much shit being sprayed on that stuff all the time that like you can actually end up like much, much more unhealthy and much more uh, affected from like an immune response standpoint, more inflammation and everything than if you were just eating clean meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to be laughing at ourselves a hundred years from now. Little side tangent, um, I Googled after looking at this, 
like what are some of the Google trends? Look at this homesteading. Basically, when did home. that when did that take off? It's like pretty level until what's that? Say? Well, it's level till about um, December of 2022, and it just shoots way up. And this chart goes from zero um, up to 100, so it just shows in volume. Wow. And so we're talking about millions and millions and millions and millions of searches for homesteading. People who were had small YouTube channels uh, blew up to millions of followers. There's who were like, they were homesteaders and kind of like nerds and then yeah. they became superstars. And then they became superstars. I mean, look at TV yeah. shows like The Homestead Rescue. Hugely My boy, successful. Marty Rainey. Yeah, so successful. But the reality is, is people are losing trust in the systems yeah. that we put so much trust in. And I've unfortunately, a lot of the previous generations kind of fucked us over with a lot of things. They, they, they exchanged convenience. They, I should say they exchanged their freedoms for convenience. And their independence. And their independence. Like, um, it's easy to go buy something from the store and eat it and consume it. That's easy. But like, you don't know what's in it. You mm -hmm. don't know if it's, we're just guessing and hoping that what's on the label is correct. Um, but I found that shocking on how much you can just see how all of a sudden homesteading became like a, a pretty big trend. This guy kind of did a good answer. It's about a minute long about why Gen Z's and millennials are fleeing to like homesteading and why it's so popular. Um, I don't know much about this guy, but this video got millions of views on TikTok. I think it had like a million two well, I'll likes. I'll see as a, as a homesteader myself, yes. I'll hear what he says and I'll see if, if it aligns with you know, know my sentiments on it. A lot of people have been asking me why I think so many millennials and Gen Z folks are getting into off-grid living, homesteading, van life, that kind of stuff. So let's talk about it. You ever been in a relationship with a liar? I mean, like a dyed in the wool, lies about stupid things. See where he's going. Habitual liar. I mean, the ones that can't even help themselves. The relationship goes a little something like this. They tell you a lie, you question the lie. They tell you another lie to cover that lie up. You question it, and when it becomes abundantly clear that they can no longer lie to you, they attack you or your character to anyone who will listen. That also describes the relationship between our society as a whole and the younger generation. The older generations basically destroyed the economy, strip mined all of the future wealth and opportunity as well as, and most importantly, hope through their voting practices, both politically and with their wallets through investments and in what they valued. They also gave away a ton of their personal liberties in exchange for convenience and security right now, not even taking into consideration what that was going to mean for future generations. All the while, they told the younger generation all they had to do was get good grades, go to college, get a good job, and they too will have the American dream. They'll be able to buy a house, start a family, put money aside for retirement, and live the good life. That was a lie. When the younger generation, with almost infinite information at their fingertips to look up facts, started to question it, and it became clear to society that they could no longer perpetuate that lie, society went on the attack. They called them lazy, and they said that it was because they bought avocado toast and lattes every day that they were never going to have anything in the future. Avocado and then one day, they awesome. were on the internet, so and they came across a tutorial for how to grow avocados, how to make your own sourdough bread, how to steam milk, and they realized... They can make their own avocado toast and they can make their own lattes and they didn't have to work all day and night just to make enough money to afford to keep a roof over their head and still afford to pay for a couple of the things that they felt made life worth it. So they started looking for a different path forward. They set out to learn how to provide for themselves without having to fall for the lie that they've been told their whole life. Here's the thing about a liar. Their lies only work so long as you don't seek out and find the truth. And that society requires your dependence and reliance to stay relevant. The younger generations may not want to work their entire lives away without a glimmer of hope just to make up for the mistakes and misdeeds of their mothers and fathers. And society, at its most defensive, can call them lazy for that. But two things that they are not is quiet and stupid. In the last couple of years, they started hearing that they didn't have to be reliant or dependent either and that got their attention. So I think that is why they look to creators in the off-grid living and homesteading world and ask how. And I, for one, am gonna do everything I can to answer that question. And honestly, I can't wait to see what they do with everything else that they find out. Yeah, I mean, look, he, I think, pretty accurately captures the sentiment of a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. um, they feel like they've been lied to. Yeah. Uh, 
And, and I, you know, here's the thing, like, I, I think it's a little unfair to place, um, all the blame on this older generation as he talks about, you know, like, I think, I think, yes, there, there was, there are segments of this older generation, as we call it, um, that have lied for sure. I think there's also a good chunk of them that believed in a dream Mm -hmm. that over time was hijacked, bastardized and shredded by, um, certain actors in society who, who are hell bent on destruction and bent on overturning and revolutionizing, uh, the way of life for millions of people. And, um, I think that that is what we're seeing, um, in pretty dramatic fashion in the last several years. Um, and it's not just the West, like it's not just America, Mm -hmm. it's a lot of Western countries, but we're seeing this uh, across the world, this, this sort of desire to destroy and rebuild. Um, and to me, it comes back to like the old, the old story. I don't know if it's like a parable, but the old story of like, there's, there's a certain type of person that finds a fence in the woods. They're just hiking through the woods and they come up, come up on a fence. And this type of person, I would like to say like myself that sees that fence and says, huh, wonder what that fence is there for. I suppose I probably shouldn't knock it down because maybe it's keeping something in or someone out. There's another group of people that comes across that same fence and would say, well, this shouldn't be here. I need to, I need to take down this fence. Why is this fence here? It needs to be removed. And, um, I don't, it's maybe presumptive to say who's wrong. I think it's, it's situational, but I think what we've, what we've ended up with now is a society of people who don't question whether, uh, the fence is there for any reason. They just want to destroy it. They just want to, they, they, they say, no, that fence doesn't apply to me or that fence is bad because of X, Y, and Z, and it needs to come down. And we're seeing that across all of society and it's destroying, I think the dream that some of this older generation had for our nation, at least. And, um, that's how I like to see it anyway. I think there were the, the good chunk of people that believed in, in something good. And I think, I think we had something good as a nation that has been really tested. I'll put it that way, um, over the last few years. And I think it's been everybody from our, our government to our medical community to, um, you know, corporations, uh, And for me as a homesteader myself, some of the big motivations come down to, um, independence, you know, being able to create a life that, um, I have flexibility, I have freedom and I have the ability to, um, do what I want and what I need to. I live in the country. My property is zoned ag. If I want to go out of my backyard and and shoot my gun, I can. Um, no, I have me. the, I could have tested my shotgun <laughs> on the, your chickens. I have the ability to, uh, to, to have animals here, have, have animal agriculture. Uh, and we do, as I said, we've got our chickens. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that we can do here and have the freedom to do, um, live in this homestead life. Now, I think a really important caveat to this, by the way, after doing it for a year, it's not easy and it's also not cheap. In most cases, um, we had to buy a tractor in order to actually do the things we wanted to do. And I got a very cheap, very used tractor, but it still costs a lot. Um, you know, raising animals is not cheap. Um, creating the infrastructure around your animals and, and, uh, you know, your garden to grow your food, um, creating processes and, and, um, you know, like all of this stuff, especially if you're moving from, if you're moving from the city. And you have no, like we moved from actually a, a fairly rural house in the first place. So I, I have, I have a, um, a fairly long history of doing everything from cutting down trees to, to fishing to, you know, whatever. Like I, I have a lot of tools. I have a lot of know-how. If you're coming from the city as like someone who's totally green to this, it is a big life change. Um, so don't think that it's going to solve all your problems or it's going to save you like all this money or it's going to, you know, be this easy and free way of life. It's, it, it's hard. Um, and it takes a lot out of you, but it's worth it because again, you're independent from this system. You can reduce your expenses over time anyway. Um, but I just don't trust our institution. I, I, I don't yeah. trust. We wanted clean food. Well, honestly. What, even like what Dwayne 
from Dry Creek Wranglers. This guy kind of reminds me of him. Yeah. By well, I want to have him on the podcast. I think he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but, so so he Dwayne said wise. Yeah, Dwayne sure. said there's always the pendulum, and you can he said you can mm. see it all the time. Yeah. An overreaction in both ways. Yeah. If someone goes too conservative, ten years later, it's going to be to the liberal side. Um, what we're seeing right now is people so put so much faith in the system of yeah go to school or at get least in, in debt, the idea of the system and the, the end dream, idea the dream because like said... it worked for a lot of people in yeah. the past and then they bought a hook line and sinker and then what you're seeing now is a lot of people are like screw it all I don't trust any of it and they're just going to the opposite side mm -hmm. um, I like like you said the independence but we should probably like, they say they say I don't trust any of it so I'm going to do all of it right. myself I'm going to own everything right. right? Right. No, that's exactly what happens. And part of me is like, I'm a true blood American, like through and through. So like, I've got to kind of got that patriot personality of like, you know, Same. screw the king. Like, let's start our own country, <laughs> you know? And it's unfortunately, there the one thing this guy did say in one of his videos, he goes, you know, sheep spend their entire life worried about wolves to eventually be eaten by the shepherd. Hmm. Mm. And that's, a good, I, that's I, interesting. Yeah. And if you think about it, we are always referred to in like ancient texts, Bibles um, as sheep because we just kind of follow the crowd or, or like a lamb, a lamb. Yes. Yeah. We're always, we just follow the crowd. People are so worried about standing out. Um, and a lot of times we're worried about one thing. And not realizing a lot of times, like people, we're, we're so worried about like China, Russia, and our shepherd, you know, in a sense, our government, you know, a lot of times is the ones that can cause problems. Uh, but it was just an interesting thought. It's just like sheep spend their life afraid of the wolves and eventually get eaten by the shepherd. So I don't know what to take of that, but um, I think it'd be cool to have on the podcast. Um, but he was from, he's a California guy. And let's get him on. I think we should. Should we wrap this up? He was. He's. He's not still no, living that no, life, he right? He lives. I mean, he's off grid. Yeah, yeah. He's off grid. Like, like you know, people are like, oh, I'm a homestead. No, this guy has like no power. He runs his own generators and has his own solar farm and like it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's cool. Good for him. Um, do you want to wrap this up? <clears throat> let's. How do we wrap this up? I think we should wrap it up with Dave. You're, you're so dumb for thinking. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I I would never try any of this fake meat. Even, uh, what even if even if you were provided evidence that it tasted good, it was safe and nutritious, dude, and it was affordable for I, you. I can't talk. I could talk for an hour about how many times the FDA has come out and said this is safe, this is good, and then twenty years later, oops. Well, and. That, it, it, and by the way, when I say safe and nutritious, yeah. I'm not saying based on the FDA standard or the USDA standard. I'm saying if there was sufficient evidence, longitudinal studies to actually, um, to, to actually, as far as I'm concerned, prove beyond a reasonable doubt that like this, this is good. I mean, like, uh, honestly, that'd be tough, but okay. But, but pause for a second and think about all the things that you consume or have it like your diet's gotten a lot better in recent years mm -hmm. but like so is mine but when we were younger the kinds of stuff that we would consume yeah like i'm also i have, I have a it. massive heart issue so like you can't use me as an example Fun, but i'm saying like most of the things that when we talk about the standard american diet like most of the things it's that we trash. consume can you actually prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it doesn't no. like you talk about like any energy drink you talk about, again, like if we're talking Doritos, Cheetos, like mm. any kind of chip, snack, food, candy, which is basically all synthetic shit and sugar. Plastics. Plastics. Oh, yeah. Um, gelatin, all that stuff, like the the coating of it. Um, I mean, like there's a lot of lots of alcoholic drinks, um, any kind of like mixed drink, like pre-mixed drink that comes in a can. Like, you know, you've got BPAs leaching from cans. You've got, um, usually I guess that's 10 cans, but um all this like synthetic flavoring and stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff that honestly, if there was like real legit third party testing on all this stuff, if we could take the entire standard American diet and have it like an unbiased true test of like, 
what is this stuff actually doing to our to our physiology, which I think we're seeing, by the way, obviously, and increased cancer rates and and uh, just the overall decline in people's health in our nation. But none of that stuff's good for you. It's all killing us. So I feel like what is it is is the army's at the gate. We're keeping them at bay. That's what I feel like with eating food. We're keeping them at bay. And all of a sudden you realize the, the back door is open and here comes fake chicken. <laughs> like trying to, cause it's like, is I the, think. Is the army 70 billion no, uh, living chickens? No, the army is red dye 40. Um, mm. It's it's Doritos and it's uh, MSG stuff. It's so you're saying the, they're just sneaking in as like a, like a, like the Trojan horse. Yeah, it's, it's like it, guys, steak, it's going like, to be great. It's real chicken cells. It ain't real chicken, I guess. You're right. It's it's real chicken cells. Yeah. But then at different. what point in time are they going to just keep using the cells, the cells, the cells? What happens if it's some retarded chicken and it ends up making us all sick? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, so if there's some sort of mutation in the DNA, that could cause problems. I, I vote hell no. <laughs> like, the, I, don't, I don't think I could trust the data. I mean, like, I'm old enough to have seen a lot of stuff where the news organizations come out, all the people say it's safe, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe. And then all of a sudden you start seeing those commercials creep up. Have you tried Ozempic or what, you know, whatever, have you tried opioids, uh, whatever it is? Do you have any side effects from the asbestos commercials? I think we're living it right now, by the way, with COVID vaccine, because like the entire government and medical community is totally, uh, ignoring like the, the media is somewhat reporting on this, I guess. It's going to come in droves. But they're ignoring the fact that like we are seeing evidence of increased health incidents, whether, you know, there's heart attacks or strokes or whatever, um, that is likely tied to COVID vaccines. Like there's, there's strong evidence, increasing evidence supporting that we're seeing people, you know, teenagers, people in their twenties, like dying of heart attacks and strokes, or at least falling victim to these things, myocarditis, all this stuff that like we weren't seeing before. And, uh, the same people that were so quick to correlate your sneeze with grandma's death from COVID on the other side of the country are like, Oh, you need to like keep a distance. And, and all these, these people are not correlating the evidence and the data that shows this like increase in myocarditis and, and heart attacks and strokes with the, with this sudden mass injection of our populace. And I, it, they're refusing to, to even really discuss it. And I think you're right. I mean, I think, um, I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope everybody who has suggested this is wrong because I, I don't want to think that an entire generation of people have been, have been poisoned by, um, by a mass vaccine, mass vaccination, but I think time will tell, you know, I think we go to market too quick here in America. I think it needs to, well, I mean, look, we had to go to market quick with COVID. Like we, we had to react. Uh, yeah. But, um, but again, it was, it, it, it comes back to, do we all have, do we all agree? Are we, are we, do we have good data to start with, to build the foundation out uh, around the need for this thing? Like, I think a lot of people would say, well, much of COVID had run its course, not to make this a COVID podcast, but like, um, in the early days, a lot of people died from COVID and it was really bad. Um, but the rates of death would suggest that many of the people that were going to die from COVID did die from COVID and that it had again, kind of run its course. But then we proceeded to inject enormous amounts of people. Um, and, and the government created all this messaging around like, Oh yeah, no, it's good. It's safe. It's effective. And by the way, like, originally they said it will prevent you from getting COVID. Then that changed to, well, no, it'll just reduce your, your case of COVID. But they assured you that yeah. like, if you got a vaccine, you would not get COVID. And then they assured you that if you got it, it would reduce your, it would lessen. They also assured you that if you wore a mask, you'd be safe and that you'd keep others from getting sick. There's like all these. So you see why like, a lot of people are just not trusting. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, our government was so quick to say a lot of things about stuff they had no idea what they were talking about. And that's, that's, I just wish they would have used the term as far as we know at the moment. Yeah. This. That was not used as enough. Yeah. Like based on what we know at this moment, here's what we know. Like just, well, anyways, we, we could we'll talk about this topic. forever. How, uh, long, how long have we been going? Um, hour and 15? Hour and 15. 
I, all I'm saying is, for me, hell no. I just don't. I don't trust. <laughs> I don't trust it. I don't. And I, I'm becoming a, a a grumpy old fart as I get older, where I don't like technology. And I love. I used to love technology. I hate the AI stuff. I hate what, how. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't like fake meat. Uh, I want a better future. I want a cool future where it's scientifically like, you know, it's, it's Star Trek, but I don't want to be in the process of getting to Star Trek. I want to like, you know, so here's, here's what will perfectly capture my attitude towards the fake meat. Um, I think it's the movie contagion, I think, um, or one of those like it. There's actually been a lot of, interestingly, we lived what, what what has actually been the subject of many Hollywood movies along the way, where there's this mass epidemic uh, around the world, people get sick, like, and it's this race against time for, uh, go figure, the, um, the powers that be, the governments, the World Health Organization, it's all these people that are racing to save the day and come out with a, with a, a vaccine in order to stop the spread of the virus. Like, this is... Like we lived that movie yeah. a few years ago and there is sort of this understanding as they do in Hollywood where like the victory is clean and easy and like, oh, they created the vaccine. I even saw, I think it's contagious again, where like, uh, what's her name? Injects it into her, into her thigh. Like she's like, this is it. This must be it. Like injects it into her thigh just to like immediately. That's the test. But they're, they're so quick to be like, this is the solution. We're going to distribute it to everyone immediately around the world. And this, like we've saved the day. Um, that I'm all for when it comes to fake meat, the idea that like, yes, this is the solution. It solves these problems and it's great. Having lived through COVID, I realized that, that that Hollywood idea of like, yeah, we found the vaccine and, and the day is saved. It's not that clean. It's not that easy. Uh, and there are costs associated with it. And, uh, I think that the fake real life fake meat, I worry that there's like in reality compared to the, the concept and the idea, I worry that it's, it's messier and that, that it comes at a cost. And that, uh, for that reason, I, I just, I don't, I don't have this blind trust in it. I don't think I have this like revolt that you have this, uh, or is it revolt? Revolt is fine. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm open to the idea, but again, the idea has to match the reality. And I don't think we're there right now. I, I think, don't think we will be there anytime real soon. No, I don't think it's soon. And they're going to jump in too soon. I, it, as a concept, it's cool, but I think it could, it's going to cause a lot of problems. I think. I just know that look, chicken is delicious. I don't like killing birds, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, that stuff is good. Well, what would you guys do? Um, would you eat the fake chicken or will you just stick with, um, good old fashioned God made, God made instead of lab grown, it's, yeah. it's God grown. Yeah. I mean, I mean I've always, we, yeah. this, this is a, this is a, uh, this mul multiple layers to this conversation into this topic. Clearly it's a long podcast, but like, um, I am eager to kind of like pull the audience and hear what people have to say about this. Whenever we play God, it doesn't go well, dude. That summarizes it hundred percent. Absolutely. In every, in every way that right there, that's the, that's the closing line because you're right. All right, guys, thanks for listening. This is a really interesting topic, uh, as far as we're concerned, but, uh, very curious what you think. So make sure leave a comment, tell us if you would eat lab grown meat, tell us what your concerns are. If you share them, Jake says no, hell no. Um, but, uh, but jump in, tell us what you think. We want to hear it. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you next time. Yes. Bye. Don't eat it.